In this video, we're going to start taking a look at energy and how that affects reactions. So let's first talk about what energy is. It's the combination of work and heat that a sample is able to transfer. When we talk about the study of energy changes, we're talking about thermodynamics. And when we measure energy, we measure it in the unit of joules. Uh, the joules is abbreviated with a capital J. And hopefully you recognize that the word thermo means heat and dynamic means movement. So you can kind of think about that word in terms of what you know about them. Now work is the energy that is required to move an object by applying a force over a distance. So if you're sitting in class and I walk up and I push your chair from behind, I'm doing work. And we say that chemists really don't do work because we're not really thinking about the energy of moving objects. We're more thinking about the heat of uh, what's happening, the transfer of energy due to a difference in temperature. And so heat is really not the same thing as temperature, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, sometimes they're not even related. So let's talk about the differences there. Heat is what we use to measure the energy flow from one object to another in joules. And what temperature does is tells us whether or not heat can flow from one object to another. If there's a temperature difference, heat can flow from one object to another and it will flow from the hotter object to the colder, to the, the it will, So temperature is the measurement that lets us figure out if heat can flow from one object to another. Heat will flow from an object with a higher temperature to an object with a lower temperature, always. And heat is just that energy flow. It's the average amount of energy in an object. Heat is energy flow. And temperature is just the average amount of energy in an object. And that includes all the different types of energy that we've talked about. Translational, rotational, and vibrational motion. So when we talk about temperature, it's a little bit different. We think of things with high temperatures as being hot, but that means that they have more energy. Um, and then when we talk about something being cold, it's really not cold, it's the absence of heat. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first we're going to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. So what we need to understand about that, there are actually more laws, but we just care about the first one in this class, is that remember that delta means change, so the change of energy in the universe is zero, always the amount of energy in the universe is constant, it's not created or destroyed. We have a law of conservation of energy just like the law of conservation of mass that says that we can't create and destroy energy. Some things lose energy but something else has to gain whatever energy that is. So if I walk by and shake your hand and your hand is cold and my hand is warm, the energy flows from my warm hand to your cold hand. And so it's not disappearing, it's just flowing from one thing to another or it dissipates into the air. Now, um, we're going to be dealing with that flow of energy and so we've got to talk about how we define all of this stuff. So there are some thermodynamic conventions which are just standard definitions and concepts that we use. When we talk about the universe, we're talking about everything in existence. And we don't really talk about that often. We're more interested in what is called the system. And that's the part of the universe that's being studied. That's the thing that we're interested in. For us, typically we're studying the, a reaction. And when we're talking about the reaction, we're not talking about the reactants or the products or the container, just the actual reaction. And then the other thing that we think about are the surroundings. So that's everything else except the system. So that includes the reactants, the products, the beaker, the hot plate, the air, you, me, everything else beside uh, our system, okay? So let's look at what that means. So all thermodynamic numbers have a number and a sign, okay? The number shows how big whatever we're looking at is, so it gives us a, a value. 
and then we have to look at the sign tells us about the direction of the energy flow is it coming from the surroundings to the system or from the system to the surroundings and so a positive sign means that we're adding energy to the system and a negative sign means that we are releasing energy from the system so if you look when we have a positive sign you can see that energy is flowing from the surrounding into the system that's the little drawing here on the right and if you look at the drawing on the left you can see that that's when energy is going from the system to the surroundings and so you can see that that would be when we have a negative sign energy is being given off by the system and we have to use the signs and use them in the correct way so let's think about something that we know the combustion of propane hopefully you're sitting there going hmm sounds like a Bunsen burner and if you think about it think about how it feels when you're standing near a Bunsen burner it feels hot so we know that the energy is being transferred from the reaction to the surroundings and so Q would have a negative value and it is exothermic remember we've talked about that heat is coming out of the reaction and going into the surroundings okay remember that you're part of the surroundings so you are absorbing that heat from the Bunsen burner okay so let's think about a little different reaction if you've ever played in a soccer game or some sort of sport or something you probably have one of those cold packs put on you and remember that what you do is you kind of pop it and shake it you're starting a reaction and so when you think about how it feels you put it on your knee or your head or whatever got bumped and it, it feels cold so heat is transferred from the surroundings which would be say your knee or your head into the system so that reaction is absorbing the heat from your knee or whatever place you've applied the ice pack into the little reaction that's taking place there so heat's going from the surroundings remember you're part of the surroundings into the system which is the reaction so Q our heat is positive and we say that that is an endothermic reaction so heat is going into the system from the surroundings so you can feel the temperature dropping when you put an instant ice pack on your hand because it is uh, the heat is being uh, absorbed by the reaction and that's it seems kind of odd heat going into something cold remember the ice packs not the system that's also part of the surroundings that's the reactants and the products it's transferring into the reaction and drops the temperature which makes that ice pack feel cold on your hand or your knee or whatever all right so let's talk about something called enthalpy we won't really talk about this much we just need to think about it I used it a lot when I worked in chemi but for you guys we just need to touch on it so enthalpy is uh, represented by the letter capital H and it's really kind of a strange beast we don't need to worry too much about it basically what we need to know is that we live under certain conditions our pressure in the world doesn't really change uh, atmospheric pressure so just kind of everyday life um, then we can say that the change in enthalpy is equal to H final minus H initial and that's going to equal our value for Q which is heat and it makes uh, the enthalpy much easier to deal with and remember so most of the time it's pretty straightforward and here's what you need to know so let's look at heat sometimes it's really straightforward we know that when there are no phase changes or reactions involved and I would uh, highlight that or uh, circle it or underline it in your notes then we know that Q is equal to MCP Delta T and I know you're looking at that going I don't know what any of that is you, you know some of it so we know hopefully that Q is our heat in joules that's our unit of heat and M is mass that should be familiar to you CP is called specific heat that's the energy that it takes for us to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree C or one K and it has units of joules per gram degree C or joule per gram K and we'll talk about that 
And then delta T, remember the delta means the change, so change in temperature. And that's always going to be T final minus T initial. That's going to be really important because that's going to affect your sign. So you want to pay attention to which temperature you put in the T final spot and the T initial spot. Uh, with your CP, that's on your reference table. So we have that on the, there are CPs for water on the front page if you look at the front page of your reference table. And so the CP for water is 4.18 joules per gram degree C. And so if I have a gram of water and I want to increase the temperature by one degree C, say from 23 to 24 degrees C, I would have to put in 4.18 joules of energy. If you look, if you flip over to the page that has the metals, or look at the page that has the metals, I think it's actually the front page. If you look at that, they have much lower specific heats. So when you put something on the stove to heat it, it doesn't take as long to heat and cool. It doesn't have to absorb a lot of energy to, uh, to be heated. So a pot of water takes much longer to heat than just a, an empty pot sitting on the stove, and it's because the water takes a lot more energy to heat up. So let's look at how we use that equation in a problem. So in this problem, we're being asked how much heat in kilojoules is required to heat a 100 gram sample of water from 20 degrees C to 80 degrees C. So we want to start off by using our formula that we just talked about for heat. So that's going to be Q equals MCP delta T. And so let's go ahead and label everything in our problem. It's asking us how much heat. So Q is what we're looking for. It gives us grams, which is our mass of sample, which is water, and that's important. And then it's being heated from 20 degrees C to 80 degrees C. Remember that that delta T is going to be calculated by doing T final minus T initial. So if it's heated from 20, that's going to be T initial. And then it's being heated to 80, so that's going to be T final. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. We know that our mass is 100 grams. And when we look up CP on the reference table, you should be doing that right now. You should see that it is, for water, 4.18 joules per gram degree C. And then the last step is our change in temperature. Remember that it's T final, 80 degrees, minus T initial. So that's going to be 20 degrees. And so when we take that difference, that difference is 60. Don't forget to use T final minus T initial because remember it'll affect your sign. When I plug that into my calculator, I get 25,080 joules. Remember, my degree C will cancel, my grams will cancel, so I'll be left with just joules here. Now, the problem asked me for the heat in kilojoules, so I'm going to go ahead and convert that, and that would give me 25.1 kilojoules. Don't forget your sig figs on that, okay? Kilojoules are usually more convenient for working with uh, bigger samples because the even small samples take quite a bit of energy. The sign's positive, so we can see that heat was added to the system. Does it make sense? If we know we heated water from 20 degrees to 80 degrees, that we had to add heat? Hopefully it does. All right, so let's try another one. Okay, so in this case, we've got 330 joules of heat removed from a 10 gram block of zinc at 20 degrees. So what will be the final temperature? This one's a little trickier. Uh, it's not finding the heat. We're being given the heat. So let's go ahead. We're going to use the same equation, Q equals MCP delta T. But we have to set things up a little differently. We're going to solve for our final temperature. So let's go ahead and set this up in terms of our initial and final temperature. So we know if we get to get delta T by itself, we can divide both sides by MCP. So let's do that. So we know that uh, Q over MCP would be equal to, these would cancel, so delta T, so T final 
minus t initial, okay? And then in order to get t final by itself, we're just going to add t initial to both sides. So we end up with t final is equal to t initial plus q over mcp. And then we can just go ahead and plug in our numbers. We've got q here for our heat, and then 10 grams is our mass. It's removed from a block of zinc at 20 degrees, so we know that it started there. There's t initial. And then our CP, remember that that comes from the reference table. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. We've got 20 degrees C. And then we're going to add our heat. Now we want to think about what the sign is on the heat. Is heat being added or is heat being removed? If it's being removed, remember that that's going to be a negative sign. And then we're going to do our mass on the bottom times our CP, or specific heat, so 0 0.388 joule per gram degree C. You should look that up on your reference table and make sure you're using the right substance. I had to tell you that it was zinc. And when you go ahead and calculate that, I would put this part in my calculator first and then add the 20. And what I got is T final is equal to negative 65 degrees C. Two sig figs, just like my problem. And does it make sense that if we removed heat that the temperature would be lower? Hopefully it does. If you had used the positive sign for the heat, done 330 joules instead of negative 330 joules, you actually would have gotten about 105. Does that make sense if you're removing heat? These problems, you really want to think about what you expect to see in your answer. All right. We're going to move on to calorimetry next.